Everybody. Thank you so much for joining me here on Backstage with Hashtag RDM on the Radio Random Network. I am Hashtag RDM, Russell Devin McLean, and we're set and ready to return to the airwaves this week after a week off. Last week, we were busy updating the website and getting ready for what 2016 has in store for us. It's been a hell of a day, and right off the bat, this week, I got some good news and I got some bad news. Although I hate to start off on a low note, but tonight, it's only fitting I give you the bad news first. Now, my scheduled guest was supposed to be Lori Morgan, and due to the recent winter weather that struck Nashville this past week, Lori was unable to join me tonight to talk about her new album being released in February titled Letting Go Slow. Lori and her management and myself have been trying to figure out a time and a way for her to call in but unfortunately we were unable to make it happen so on behalf of everyone involved i want to send my deepest apologies to all of Lori morgan's fans who has tuned in tonight to hear Lori. we're working on scheduling her for a later date and I'll let everybody know when that day will be. Now, it did cross my mind to postpone tonight's broadcast, but I don't think it would be fair to our faithful listeners and supporters to do so. And when life gives you lemons, well, you got to make lemonade. So here's the good news. Joining me tonight to talk about her brand new album, Mountain Songbird, a sister's tribute, is country gospel recording artist Stella Parton. For those of you that are not familiar with Stella, Stella, she's a multi-award winning entertainer with 28 charted singles. And yes, you guessed it, she's the baby sister of Dolly Parton. We're going to talk about how she got into the music business, some accomplishments, and much, much more. But before we do all that, I want to tell you about Audible. Audible is offering the listeners of Backstage with hashtag RDM a chance to try out their services. You can download a free audio book with a 30-day a free trial when you sign up at audibletrial.com forward slash radio random network. Audible has over 180,000 titles to choose from with genres ranging from horror, thriller, comedy, biographies, and much, much more. The cool thing about it is Audible is compatible with iOS, Android, Kindle, and other popular devices to listen anytime and anywhere. So go sign up for your 30-day free trial and get your free audio book download at audibletrial.com forward slash radio random network. Okay. Let's get the show on the road. It's time to do it. Here we go. We're back. It's backstage with hashtag RDM on the Radio Random Network. You subscribed. You're listening now. Enjoy. This is Radio Random Network. Find us on the web at www.radiorandomnetwork.com. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave us a review on iTunes. You're backstage with hashtag RDM on Radio Random Network. Now, here's the host, Hashtag RDM, Russell Devin McLean. All right, my guest this week on Backstage with Hashtag RDM on the Radio Random Network. She is a country gospel recording artist. She's an award-winning artist. She's got a brand new album. We're going to talk about all that and more. I'm talking to none other than Miss Stella Parton. How you doing today, Miss Stella? Hi. Russell. We're doing great. We're doing great. Well, Miss Stella, you got an album called Mountain Songbird, a sister's tribute. Now, this tribute is to your sister, Dolly Parton. You have a uh, song on there you co-wrote together titled More Power to You. But real quick, the inspiration behind the album is a sister's tribute to, to your sister. What was the thought process behind putting this album out? Well, you know, I've, my sister's always been one of my very favorite songwriters. And as you know, or I assume you know, I personally think she's one of the greatest songwriters alive today in country music, and I've always loved her story songs, and, you know, I've had a long career of my own. I'm celebrating my 47th year, and I just thought it was time to do an album of her music because I've always been a huge fan. Over the years on my own albums, I've done one here, one there, 
uh, like Steady as the Rain, and I did The Flame on an album I did in Europe once, and then I did um, Blackie Kentucky on my Cole album a few years ago. But I've been working on this album about 10 years, and I thought it was about time for me to do a tribute to her music. Other people have recorded her songs over the years, and uh, but I never had done a, an entire album, although I've been asked to many times. But um, I just wanted to do it. Let's rewind a little bit as far as getting into the music business. Uh, what, what was your inspiration? Well, you know, I grew up singing with my sister Dolly and my sister Cassie. As little kids, we sang uh, backup harmony uh, for my Uncle Bill Owens, who was Dolly's first manager and our first music teacher, really. He was a rockabilly uh, singer. And uh, so we sang the harmonies for him. And um, so that's kind of where we started out as little girls. Uh, when I look back at, at it and listen to some of our uh, harmonies, we sounded like those little sisters on uh, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? And when I saw that, it kind of reminded me of him. George Clinton was acting about like him. And <laughs> his with us tag, tagging along behind him singing harmony for him. And he had this big old orange uh, F-O Gretsch guitar with that wah-wah pedal on it. And so uh, we just uh, would tag along and sing the parts for him. Yes, indeed. Now, you also released uh, an album uh, uh, covering rockabilly songs uh, before uh, called Last Train to Memphis. I did last year. I did a, a, a tour in the summer of Scandinavia with uh, Billy Burnett, um, who's, uh, you know, worked with Fleetwood, Fleetwood Mac and all these different people. And so he and I did that. And um, so I put out the Last Train to Memphis album to kind of coincide with that tour. What moment in your life did you decide that you wanted to pursue music or entertainment rather because you're you're also known for acting as well. What moment did you decide to pursue entertainment a, as a profession? Well, I've been doing this my whole life, as I said, since I was a little tiny kid. Um, I was eight or nine years old when we started singing on radio and television in Knoxville, Tennessee. By the time I was 19 years old, I had my own band and was working in clubs up and around the Washington, D.C. area. Then I moved to Nashville and started doing gospel music for a while, and then almost starved to death, went back into country music. <laughs> so, I, so, I, so I could feed my baby because I had a small child, and I was a single mother by then. And uh, so I just, and then in 1975, I had my first uh, hit record. So to answer your question, I've been doing this since 1969, making my living at it, so this is not my first rodeo. I mean, you've worked with artists such as Hank Williams Jr., you worked with Ronnie Millsap, Joan Rivers, Reba McIntyre. Out of all the artists that you've, that, that you've worked with, uh, who can you tell us maybe who is some of your favorite? Well, I would say Ronnie Millsap is one of, one of the greatest, and one of the others would have to be uh, Marty Robbins was so incredibly talented, and I toured with him over the years. I toured with um, Hank Jr. back in the day, and Merle Haggard, and actually I worked with uh, Kenny Rogers, uh, toured with him before it all I did. So wow. A lot of people don't know a lot of that about my career. They just assume I just got to town last week, but uh, <laughs> I've, been doing, I've been doing this a long time. I just didn't... I, didn't have the TV vehicle for people to see me every week, but I was always out there working and still out there working. And I'm getting ready to take the tour to the U.K. Um, the 25th of February, I'll start my tour in Aberdeen, Scotland. Now, you've toured all over the world, as you said a while ago. What are some of your favorite places to go? Well, I loved Brazil. I loved Rio de Janeiro. It's just beautiful down there. A lot of people hear bad things about it, but the weather is just awesome. I loved uh, Australia. I love the weather there, and the people are so nice there. And I really like Switzerland because it's so clean and beautiful there. You also released uh, a self-published uh, memoir called Tell It, Sister. What was the inspiration behind uh, releasing that? Well, actually, it started out, uh, it was going to be an inspirational memoir, which it is, uh, about my faith and about my walk as a Christian and how my faith has played such a integral part of my journey, and how without faith, I don't believe I would have had the courage to step out and do anything at all, uh, especially raise and educate a child uh, by myself in a struggling business such as this, because, you know, a lot of people think that 
it's easy for you when you, uh, you know, come from a family where there's a major successful story, uh, such as my sister's, but actually it's a lot harder for you. Uh, but I had the faith to believe that God had a purpose in my life and that he had a purpose in me being a mother. And my job was to do as good a job as I could. And so I try to tell my story to inspire other young women and men to say, it's so important to overcome some of the things such as kidnapping, domestic violence, and all the things that I have overcome and still not be a cripple because of it, then maybe I can move forward in my life as well. You're a, a advocate for uh, combat domestic violence, but... Uh... Is that is that something, I mean, I don't want to get too deep into it. We want to stay kind of positive, but is that something that you had to go through? Yes, it is. Uh, but I think that everything we go through is just a stepping stone to something else. If we survive it, then we're supposed to share it and let people know uh, that they can overcome anything. I think if we're, if we're in an industry such as the entertainment industry, then we're supposed to, I believe we're, charged with the responsibility to be an inspiration and that's what i've always tried to do is just be an inspiration to um whoever i uh, you know meet along the way what was your thoughts on uh the code of many colors the tv series well since i was the consultant on on the movie uh because my sister was absent and it is my story as well it is her song and it was her story and she told it it's her vehicle but i'm in the movie as a little girl right. as well so uh, but those are my loved ones also. So Dolly left me in charge on the set to be the consultant. But I also played the role of Miss Corla Bass. I was the gossip, the town gossip. I don't know if you could recognize me, but that was me. So I thought it turned out pretty good because um, we made sure that they kept uh, the integrity intact about our faith and about our family. And, you know, it was it was a lot of pressure to make sure that that all was done, but but everybody was so cooperative and so respectful of my family and us as a family unit, and uh, I think it turned out really great. Can you give any advice to any uh, female entertainers that maybe want to follow in your footsteps? Well, don't be a coward. Just don't be a coward. Have have enough courage if you believe in yourself and if you have a dream then believe in yourself enough to overcome whatever you have to face and get out there and don't wait for the perfect little opportunity. Just take whatever opportunity comes along and make it a perfect situation. Thank you so much, Miss Stella, for joining me today. For more information on Stella, you can go to www.stellaparton.com. You can pick up a copy of the brand new album. Miss Stella, it was an honor and a pleasure to talk to you today, and I admire your spunk and your courage. Well, thank you, honey. I appreciate you having me on, Russell. And you can go to Facebook or Instagram or com and find me. That's it. Miss Stella, I hope that you join me in a couple of months, and we'll talk a little bit more about your career and, and all your success. Thank you so much for joining me today, Miss Stella. Thank you, Russell. Oh, man, thank you so much, Stella, for joining me. All right, guys, we're going to be right back after we pay a few bills. Don't go nowhere. <laughs> market to buy a new home or maybe you're wanting to put your home on the market contact real estate agent tanya halford tanya is a kdk capital regional realty partner and can assist you with all of your real estate needs contact tanya today for your free consultation at 225-202-0657 Okay, we're back, and I want to thank Stella Pardon for joining me, and I want to encourage everyone listening to visit Stella's website and pick up a copy of her new album, Mountain Songbird, A Sister's Tribute. I want to remind everybody that all the links we talked about on today's episode can be found in the show notes at radiorandomnetwork.com forward slash Stella. If you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to rate and review the show on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Hey, that helps with the rankings and the algorithms. It helps us get discovered by a larger audience. Be sure to shop with our affiliates uh, with the links provided at radiorandomnetwork.com forward slash Stella. You'll find 
all ways to support the Radio Random Network and to keep it free for all our listeners. Thank you so much for listening. It really means a lot to me to know that I can brighten your day with my version of online, on-demand audio entertainment. Y'all be sure and tune in Friday for the Russell and Mudtooth Show. And don't forget, I'll be here next week with another episode of Backstage with Hashtag RDM right here on the Radio Random Network. Thank you so much for listening, and thanks for tuning in. I'll talk with you next week. I'm Hashtag RDM Russell Devin McLean. Be safe, and God bless. Tune in every Tuesday at 7.05 p.m. Central Standard Time for a show created for musicians and music lovers alike. Backstage with Hashtag RDM. For more information about the host, guests, or our other weekly programs, visit RadioRandomNetwork.com. Thanks for listening. 